Okay, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Crispy. This is the Table Runner channel, and I'm, I'm very, very pleased to have a guest with me to have a conversation. This is my good friend, Lauren. Uh, Lauren has moved away. We're trying not to hold that against him. Uh, but for several years, uh, Lauren joined us in our weekly in-person game. We played a number of different games, didn't we, Lauren? We started off with uh, Starfinder. We had like a science fiction thing. We did a whole bunch of different games. And uh, I've invited Lauren to come and share his experiences because I cornered Lauren. Uh, actually, it was it was at church. <laughs> I cornered Lauren and said, "Hey, Lauren, uh, we're we play this weekly game, and I think you'd I think you'd really enjoy it. Why don't you come and give it a shot?" And Lauren actually did that, and so he came and was part of our weekly game. This was a new experience for you, right, Lauren? Like this wasn't something that. No. you had ever done before it was no i brand never new. done this no this was new yeah <laughs> so i i thought i just have a few questions to ask you and I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts on your experiences having tried out this hobby when i first invited you to join our weekly game was there something in particular that appealed to you when i when i that made you say yeah you know what i'll give it a shot uh, actually, the reason why I wanted to give it a shot is I remember before hearing about you doing this and I noticed you're still doing it. So that I thought there must be something fun to do here. <laughs> so I thought I would give it a shot and that's, that's kind of, it, it intrigued me. And so I wanted to find out what you guys were doing. <laughs> and, and when you did that and you took that risk and came to my house and we, we had this, what, was there something that in particular that kept you interested enough to keep coming? Like what, what was it that kept you interested? Um, I think it opened up a part of my life that I'd never experienced before. Like a lot of times you don't have an opportunity to use your imagination. And I realized that, wow, with the right story, storyteller. And that was the key is you're a fantastic storyteller. And I, I just got right into character and that's what kept me going. When you say getting into character, Lauren, just to stay on that, what, which characters that we, you played over the years, which ones really stuck with you and, and why do you think they stuck with you? I don't know why, but the mafia being a mafia. <laughs> Bob Karachi. Do you remember yeah, Bob, Bob Karachi? I don't know what it was about that. I think what it is, it's, I was able to experience things that I would never do. Yeah. Like I would never be a mafia boss, <laughs> <laughs> but it gave me a chance to kind of explore that end of it. Right. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. What, the, what was the, when you getting into character and getting into these, this hobby, what was the most challenging thing that you found? This was something that was new for you. What was, what was challenging? So I think as we evolved, the challenging part was when we began, it was very much the traditional way of doing the game. Mm -hmm. um, that was a bit more of a challenge for me, doing the dice roll and doing the lookup tables and all that. And that kind, of, that kind of took away from the game for myself. But when we started getting into more of a freeform game, Mm -hmm. it, it seemed to, like you wouldn't have distractions that would take you out of character. You could really feel your role when you didn't have to get into that lookup table idea. It's, it's really interesting you say that because um, you would think that just having, playing it like a board game, because I know you like a lot of games, uh, yeah. board games, you'd think that would be easier to do. But I, uh, I find it very fascinating that as a new person in the hobby, that was the challenging part uh, because it, it was more difficult to stay in character if you were looking up tables and you were constantly referencing rules and what do I have to find on the character sheet? Uh, when, when, when you were playing these and you were in character and as our game, our in-person game changed to be more in character than, than out of character, what, were there certain events that stuck with you? And if, if there were events that, um, if you can recall them, why do you think that they left such an impression? I think because it became so real that it was actually easy to stay in character because you actually believed you were that person. Absolutely. And, and so 
the the reason why the lookup tables was distracting is because it's kind of like hitting the pause button and discussing stuff and then going back right. to the movie, right? Whereas that was kind of like your, yeah. It, yeah. That was that. I remember you played a gambler in our Weird Frontiers game, right? But, <laughs> and and that that had a lot of lookup tables, didn't it? Yeah. But, now, in its place, the lookup tables are fine because that's uh -huh. you'll have that in normal life too. Sure. But sure. so the lookup tables for certain things is fine, but as as a main part of the game, that was mm -hmm. distracting. Mm -hmm. So this way, actually. What was nice too, as a storyteller, I noticed you weren't being distracted as much because you could just carry on with your story as opposed to waiting for us to look stuff up, right? Right, right. So, right. which is is more right. jarring. Um, yeah. So I think it just melded better. I think mm -hmm. between the two of us, and then you, when you were trying, when you were working out our protocol, where mm -hmm. you know we are staying in role as opposed to going out a rule all the time then it became more real mm -hmm. it was it was wonderful yeah that was with when we stopped doing uh out of character questions to me like do i see this and can yes. i see that yes how challenging describe that that experience for you like from your perspective because you didn't have as long in the in the hobby as some of the other players did was that a was that very difficult to do or did it feel natural uh to to move into that more in character play. What what was your I'm just curious what your experience was with that that change. Yeah, um for me that was actually more intuitive. Um because okay. it 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 melded in very nicely. For me the challenge was is when we we're doing the dice roll where mm -hmm. like again with the tables and stuff that, that was challenging for me just because I get distracted. So right. it was, it was easier for me to do it this way because then I could get creative and I didn't have all these distractions. And I think that's and the key. The Let's talk a little bit about that. You mentioned creativity. Uh, what, what did you do? Cause you, you have a bit of a reputation at our, our game table for being the creative player. <laughs> so what did you do to be, to be the creative one? Um, <laughs> I would actually, during the week sometimes think about my character and think about how would how would this work out right <laughs> <laughs> speaking of characters that are completely different to you in real life you once played a character that uh, that had he was a little too hooked on the sauce and he was a pilot uh do you you remember that character oh, that's right story? yeah i was into the sauce yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about that experience. What was it like to to do that, to play a character just so unlike yourself? And how do you think you were able to pull it off so well? I think it's kind of like, I don't know if any of you have played Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yes. You, you don't normally go up onto a sidewalk and knock people over. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, just being able to do some of those things you wouldn't normally do was kind of a thrill in itself. <laughs> sure it is. Sure it is. The when when thinking about uh, people like yourself introduced to the hobby for a first time, um, what advice would you give Lauren to to new people? Maybe someone else out there that get is is curious about it. You know someone that's uh, that's hooked on the hobby. What what advice would you give to people trying out for the first time? Like, what would be now that you've done it? What would you say to others? Yeah, so I would say probably the one thing that I didn't do that I should have, and that was um, you would hand out literature that would help you understand more the role. And the the problem was is I'm not a great reader. And so I, I didn't read a whole bunch. Had have I done that, maybe the lookup tables wouldn't have been so challenging. Right. So right. I'd say get a knowledge of, of the particular game you're playing. Just become more familiar with it. I think that would make it a lot easier. That make it easier. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And in, I would say advice-wise is don't get hung up yeah. on on you know, like still enjoy the game. I mean, there's what was nice is you guys were all around to help me. And that <laughs> made the game so much easier because it was a little bit worrisome that, you know, everybody else is looking at me and I'm trying to figure this out. They think I'm 
you know. <laughs> yeah. Is this guy a little slow? What's <laughs> going on? Well, like I remember yeah. in, when you were just new into the group, um, you kept on making these comments like, these people, like wh what kind of person comes up with all of this? Like the creativity involved and yeah. like what kind of game is this? This game yeah. is, is it's just so the scope of it can be so large. It can be a, uh, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, it, to, yes. To be honest. But like anything you grow with it, like, mm -hmm. you know, you develop a talent and, and it actually didn't take too long. No, I, you know, what really helped though was during COVID when we were doing it online. Yes. We did it online for about a, what a year, about a year. Yeah. 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 And actually, during that time is actually when I will learn the game a bit better because I had to pay attention more. That's true. Like the yeah, one yeah. thing about being together as a group, you can rely on other people a lot more, but that kind of taught me to learn a little bit more about how the game operates. And right. once you become more familiar with the game, it becomes a lot more fun. Yeah. 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 yeah that's so true. That's so true. You know, I understand that uh, you have some, you have a son-in-law that's in the hobby or interested in the hobby. Are you any any? Have you made any progress yet? You were just before we went uh, started the recording. You were telling me that you're still kind of in the process of a move. Um, yeah. Are so, you are yeah. you going to get some gaming in the future? I hope. Or, or Actually, we you? were talking about it. And we, but the challenge is, is to find a good storyteller and that's what we're, we're going right. to work on. But yeah, yeah, we actually did mention it that we, now that we're closer to each other, we could actually maybe try it out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It was, uh, we, we did Lauren, um, we went through some big changes in our group while you were there. And of course you mentioned it, how we, we went from, the standard play, just everyone asking out of character questions and expecting to be telling told a story, and to to something that was much more character driven. It was you guys that were deciding what to do next, and mm -hmm. I was careful not to move you around, and you'd have to move yourself around. And the, the fascinating thing was that afterwards, when we were finished, we would have these incredible things that had happened, and look at all this, and and the, just to to give you a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. Most of the time I had no idea what was going to happen. It was because uh, I can never predict what Lauren's character would do. He would do things that I just never would have thought of that. Uh, well, you know, what's funny, Chris is I often wondered you are, you were so good at storytelling that I often wondered if I, figured out the whole plot of the story because <laughs> whatever I said, it seemed like it was the correct answer, but there it is a way of melding the story. So <laughs> seamlessly that yeah, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is something, sorry to interrupt it. There's it, it is a skill to try to come away from that game session, thinking that everyone feeling like they were, they were integral to what happened yes. and that they weren't just yeah. spectators but they were, it was so important that they were there. And if they weren't there, this, what happened just could never have happened. No, um, exactly. Like the 300 feet of rope, right? Oh, the 300 feet of rope. Oh boy. <laughs> there was some things that early on, and we were still not so concerned about being in character. You were playing a dwarf and, and this dwarf was maybe the, the, uh, the shortest lifespan dwarf in any game for a, a long time. You remember that you went yeah. off, you went off by himself and then yeah, that's right. got into trouble. I decided to go off by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was fun to see someone new in the hobby yeah. learning the, uh, the tropes of the, of the hobby, <laughs> like never go by yourself. And that's right. I learned that pretty quick. The 300 feet of rope that yeah. he's carrying around and a, yeah, oh. th there was a lot of memorable times, but I have to say one of the most memorable things in all of the game sessions that we had with you, and we certainly miss you in the game group. Uh, it, there was a, the, it was a science fiction game. We were playing traveler, I believe. And Lauren's character was the pilot and he was a functional alcoholic. <laughs> and the, he was, uh, he was, they just got a new ship and he was going through the ship and, just familiarizing himself as the pilot with the ship. And you remember you invented finding something in the, in the ship. It was a book 
And this is something that Lauren just, he just created this out of thin air. It was just the most hilarious thing ever. Uh, he, he pulls out of a locker, a book, and the book is a manual for sailors saying, you know, how to avoid alcohol abuse or something like that. And Lauren's coming up with this and he's, he's saying all this, Oh, I see, I find this manual and it's about, and goes, and, and then what did you do? Like, what did you do with this manual that you had created? Do you remember? I think I just gave it the big heave hole. Yes, he just threw it in an incinerator. Like, ah, oh, no one needs That's this. Right. Yeah, this so isn't going to work. Because <laughs> we, because we're looking at Lauren, who's who's had this character arc, and and we're thinking, oh, he's he's gonna maybe he's gonna reform himself, but instead he just throws it away. <laughs> that was <laughs> hilarious, actually. It was so funny. One of one of the most hysterical things that has happened in the game for a long time, uh, just because everyone thought it was riotously funny <laughs> when you did that. But uh, it was great. The the uh, what should having gone through this invitation and then and then being part of a weekly group game group. What inv what advice would you give to others like myself uh, when we're we're potentially out there looking to introduce people to the hobby? What's a good pitch? Do you think to uh, to get people to to try it out and see what they may have been missing? Um, to begin with, probably why what I, why I was a little leery is because the the typical D and D mm -hmm. role playing was sort of labeled as a nerd thing, right? <laughs> Very much and, so. And I always had the vision of everybody dressing up and they're, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? I think that's what's given it a bad name. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. it couldn't be any further from the truth. Mm -hmm. It's everybody's in their own comfort zone and the, and it's us that does that determined what the stories were. Right. So, mm -hmm. You don't have to be uncomfortable because you're going to be doing something you want to do. And so exactly. I think I think the draw would be is if you're creative and you want something as a new challenge or whatever that's fun, because there aren't that many new challenges out there. And I think mm -hmm. this this was really very different than what I ever expected. And let me put it this way. You're the first one that's ever gotten me to do a weekly thing. I've never done that in my life. <laughs> that's so good. it ended up being just a lot of fun. It it was. And so I think that's the the selling point is hey, mm -hmm. try something you haven't done before and you'll find that it's it's a blast. You know? And and speaking of trying something you did this you also got into 3D printing during this time. You were making some things for the that's right, yeah. Ice holders <laughs> that you made to help uh, organize the dice and yeah, yeah. I, I remember at one point you wanted me to clean my desk up because it was becoming a mountain of 3d prints <laughs> <laughs> yes it was it was just every week there was a new print yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that was funny well we certainly miss you lauren uh the the game was better having you and it was so refreshing for us to have someone new to the hobby <laughs> come and experience for the first time and the creativity is just so important uh one of the main struggles that can occur in the game is when we get into a bit of a rut mm -hmm. and imagination starts to atrophy. And, and one of the things that uh, was so nice to have you in the game was that you had, having had fresh eyes, mm. you had no preconceptions over anything. And it was uh, you're like, listen, I'm going to do this. And, and it was, it was also interesting to have yourself as a more mature player come in with a, lifetime of experience right and yeah. that you you were able to draw on some of those things yeah, uh, that's true in in certain circumstances like you know what this is you know <laughs> i just loved it because we knew we were in for a treat when it came up to lauren's turn and you would <laughs> you would uh, kind of scoot forward on your chair and you okay so listen and then you would go into this <laughs> you're <laughs> It was always something that we were all looking at. Like I, it was exciting for all of us because it, we knew it was going to be creative. <laughs> oh, um, right. and 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 oftentimes it failed completely. Like there were some things and immaterial to whether it was a success or a failure. 
it was memorable. And that yeah. was, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> there was a few times like where I think you were directly responsible for the deaths of <laughs> several other characters. It was um, bad. That was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> but they, but everyone everyone had a great time with that and uh it was really good so i i just encourage uh, those of you that may be watching this uh, that you know in just because someone has never played in a role-playing game it doesn't mean that they couldn't take to it and they might have a wonderful experience so get outside of yourself a little bit invite people that especially creative people or people that that uh, you think would get along well with others Try, invite them to your game and and you never know you can have a, a situation like we did with we had with lauren where something new a, a completely new hobby that turned out to be something that had it not only was it successful it was successful over time it mm -hmm. wasn't just a you know this week and next week but we and we we muscled through the covid stuff and then got all the way through into the other side, all the way up until Lauren uh, moved to be closer to his, your kids that are having babies and you know, <laughs> family and all of that. And but we're 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 hopeful that maybe in the summer Lauren will take a vacation <laughs> back to where it's nice and warm and <laughs> lake and all of that, and then we'll grab them for another game. Yeah, session. actually, that would be a great idea. <laughs> It'd be really good. And who knows? With technology, we might have to fire up a, a online thing and and have a game that way too yeah so, that could work too i really appreciate lauren uh coming on and sharing your experiences as a new player in the hobby um i hope this is useful for those that are watching and lauren appreciate your time thank you so much i know you're busy with a new a grandfather again so congratulations <laughs> and uh but we'll wh who knows and i I expect to hear about your gaming experiences when you get your new group up and going. So You bet. <laughs> well, thank you so much, sir, for being on. And I'll end the recording here. And Lauren, don't go anywhere. We'll talk a little bit afterwards. Sure. Okay. okay. That sounds great. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye.